Welcome to Monday Night Live, the weekly training that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Uh, tonight, we're going to go over the vision exercise. So for those of you new to the team in the last year, um, it's part of the 90-day Fast Start program. But what we do as a team is we go over this four-part process every year. We Last year, we started doing it in December, the first two parts in December, the latter two parts in January. So tonight's going to be the vision exercise. Next Monday will be the goals exercise. And then in January, um, let's see here. I don't have it written in my book, but I believe it's going to be the eighth will be actions exercise. And the 15th will be the planning exercise, the final, final exercise of the four-part process. So just to kind of kick this off and preface it, who, raise your hand or type in a chat box if you've done the vision exercise before on, on as, as a result of being on the team. If you've done the vision exercise, I just want to get a hand raise or a, a yes in a chat box. Um, and we've had a number of people over the years do this with great results. And one of them is Gina, who, who of course, is, I mean, we're still working with each other, but, you know, I wanted to challenge her to build her own thing. And she's doing that now, actively doing that was part of her vision. So we really take this stuff seriously. You know, if you have something you want to accomplish, uh, there, there's the only thing keeping you from accomplishing it, getting in the way is your own self. Okay. There's nothing or not, no person, no thing can stop you of accomplishing as long as it's for good. It has to be a good thing. Um, and my personal experience is if it's good for others, then it's a good thing. If it's only good for you, it might not be a good thing. <laughs> you know, So uh, kind of hard lesson in life, you know, make sure it's, um, it serves others. Like Zig Ziglar says, if you, you, if you just simply help enough other people get what they want, you'll be able to get plenty of what you want. Right. So, so we kind of live by that model course at EXP. The entire framework is based on that premise, you know, helping the next person, helping the next person get ahead, you know, you know, paying it forward, right? And our, our motto is a rising tide lifts all ships. So you often wonder, why is this person helping me? You know, they're not even, you're not on their downline, you're not on the team, because a rising tide lifts all ships. And I, I can attest to that personally. I've called people in EXP, in, in both in sales and operations that, that I knew did not know me and they still took my call and not only took my call, but followed up. So some pr pretty, pretty interesting uh, uh, testimony there. And then of course on our team, we simply replicate the EXP model by helping you build your, your model, your brand, you know, your, your persona and your results. So the, the theory is it's not just theory of what I practice is, I'm the guide and you're the hero. I, we want to make you the hero, right? So, you know, anything that we, we, we develop together, you know, I always give give you credit for it. So, for example, we don't put any sales or any listings in a team name. It's just one example. So I strongly encourage you to take full advantage of this, okay? Um, and I will challenge you if you could each write this down. Um, you know, put it on, if you have a, a notepad or a planner, write it in there. So I'm going to challenge you to when you do the vision exercise and the, the goals and the actions and the plans is to copy me on those. And we'll go over those in your one-on-ones. Some people take to it easily. Sometimes it's a, it's, it can be a challenge. I know the first time you do it, it might be a challenge, but I'm going to go over the instructions tonight. So so let me just see here. Bonette has done it. Uh, my couple's done it. Kathy Yurick's done it. And I think, I think I saw a chat there. Um, well, that's from Lisa. So that's the book. So, guys, Lisa put a post in there about the book. I'm going to repost it to host and panelists. I'm going to repost it to the everyone selection. So, what we notice, guys, if you post to a host and panelists for some reason, some people don't get it. I have no idea why. Um, but if you post it to everyone, the selection everyone, then everyone will get it. Um, so just something I happen to notice. But in any case, uh, uh, for those of you who've done it, you know the power of it. Um, you know, Benetta, for example, just, just a few months ago has hit her team split limit. So if you guys want to give her a big pat on the back, it's a major accomplishment. She's now in the 5% group. 
I mean, she keeps more money. And also Heather Price, I don't think she's on tonight, but she also did the same thing. She she hit her team split limit. So there are now more people in Group B at 5% on the team than there are in Group A. That is a major accomplishment. And everybody's that should be everybody's goal, whatever your goal should be, to hit Group B, which is 5%. So in any case, um, uh, does anybody have any questions on what actually is the vision exercise? Is it, is everybody here? I mean, on one-on-ones, we talk about it. We go through the 90-day fast start. We talk about it. Um, it's okay if you're unclear. I mean, we do this every year, and every year there's discussion about it because sometimes it's not clear. You know, remember, I've been doing this for 20, 20 this is my 20th year. I just go, this will be my 21st year coming up doing this exercise, sometimes multiple times a year. Okay, actually, here's a question. Who's done a vision exercise outside the framework of our team? In other words, something you did through like, a, you know, T. Har Vector or John Maxwell or, you know, any of the other, uh, um, who's some of the other guys? Uh, uh, Jack Canfield, he's another famous person for doing this type of work. Or John Asraf. Okay, good. Excellent. Oh, by the way, um, Rob, is it safe? Is it safe to make an announcement, or what? What's the uh, kind of fill me in there a little bit on the status? Of uh, of what exactly? Are you you're talking about me, <laughs> Rob? Rob Pro, I'm sorry, Rob Pro. Yeah, sorry, Rob. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I I can say something. Uh, not maybe not this meeting, but uh, coming up, coming up very soon. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Um. Uh. So Dutch is asking to explain. Okay, so years ago, I was really lucky, really blessed to be taking some training from, um, uh, geez, I'm, geez, I'm drawing a blank now. Um, hang on a second. The guy that did the uh, Franklin Planner, um, your values and goals. Franklin um, Covey. Thank you very much. Franklin Covey, yeah. Um, Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey. So, yeah, yeah I was, uh, you know, uh, still in my 20s, still in banking. And I guess he was just starting his program. So our bank brought him in to, to teach all of us brand new management, leadership development people. And being that I was in my in my mid mid 20s, actually, I just wasn't really, quite frankly, wasn't professionally mature enough to really appreciate what was being in, given to me. Right. Thankfully, I kept all the material um, and started using that process. In fact, this this. Franklin Covey Planner, right, right, is the same one I've been using since 1989. So, in any case, uh, uh, that's the first year I used it. I had it earlier than that. I had it back in uh, 80, 80, like two years before that. Mm -hmm. Just didn't use it. Just didn't didn't appreciate how powerful it was. But one of the things I noticed in his program, he always started us off by writing down what our values are. Every year we do the same exercise. Write down your values. Then you write your goals because your values will be more relevant when you know what your, your, your goals will be more relevant when you know what your values are. Okay. And more meaningful and more, um, more, more likely to be accomplished. And I did that for a couple of years. And then it occurred to me that there was something bigger, like something deeper. And I call it a vision, but it's not the vision that you and I can come with on our own and what we call our small mind or conscious mind. You know, a really good vision comes from your subconscious. In my opinion, it comes comes from God. That's where it comes from. Okay. So the only way to do that is to to prepare yourself to to get in the flow. Writers call it the writer's flow. Athletes call it the the you know getting in the in the the zone. Um, in order to do that, you've got to change your physiology. So I'm going to go over tonight how you do all that. But but back to the question: What is the vision exercise? So the vision is what I call your big vision, not your small vision. Your small vision is I want to make a million bucks, you know, or I want to drive a Rolls Royce or I want to, you know, live in a, you know, a mansion on the beach. All great. Nothing wrong with those goals. I'm not knocking them, but those, those are all typically coming from our, what we call our small minds, right? Our, our ego minds of, of a real vision, a big picture vision, a big vision that comes from outside your small mind. Okay. Some people call it the super conscious. Some people call it the universe, the creator. You know, to me, it's 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 there's a there's a common shared consciousness 
amongst all all people, right? And I I say people specifically because I don't know that that animals have this ability, right? I'm, in fact, I don't believe that they do, but humans do. You know, how many of you have ever had this the the experience where you're thinking about somebody, maybe you haven't seen them in a long time, and out of the blue they call you up? So you might ever had that kind of stuff happen, yes. right? Yeah. It, it, it happens more often than you might think. Some people just aren't necessarily aware of it all the time. So that's just the, the simple evidence that I've seen myself. But there actually is a lot of, you know, material that's at your disposal. You can read about, you can read and learn about all this. Um, you know, in fact, there's a whole genre on this entire subject. So what I decided to do was having this theory that there was a bigger picture, a bigger vision in store for me. So I decided to, to, to challenge myself to write it down. So in my 40th year, I'm up at summer camp with the Boy Scouts. And every day the Boy Scouts go and do their 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 merit badges and all that kind of stuff. You know, swimming, canoe and kayaking, you name it. And all the dads sit around the campfire and basically, you know, tell jokes and snore and, and stuff like that. And I thought, well, I'm not going to just sit there and... Uh, let this time out of the way. I'm going to take advantage of it. So went down to the lake with a chair by myself and a legal pad of paper, a couple of pencils, a couple of pens. They wrote at the top of a sheet of paper. All my last day, when I look back, what do I want to see? Because I, I, starting at the age of 32, I knew there was something more to life than just going to college, getting a job, having a family and buying a house and all that, going on vacation. You know, all fun stuff. But there wasn't a deep level of fulfillment that was that was associated with all that. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Like yes. you're going through the motions, you're doing everything you're, you think you're supposed to do, but you sense that there's something more. There, I'm yeah. telling you there is, okay? So before I started writing, I decided I'm, I'm going to sit here and quiet my mind. I'd heard about meditating. I tried to meditate, never could figure it out, at least back in those days. And I thought, well, at least I'm going to I'm going to try before I start writing the answer to this question on my last day, what do I want to see when I look back upon my life? Okay. So it was easy. I found out because I was sitting in, in the, at this lake, beautiful scenery. Nobody's around me. Nobody knows where I am or what I'm doing. All I see is the birds flying around the fish jumping and no sounds of any cars or planes or anything like that at all. No cell phones, no computer, nothing. All right. And now for me personally, I just started off with, Simple act of prayer, just praying for other people, praying for circumstances, for guidance and so forth. I thought, well, that's what I know I can do to, to get myself to focus and calm down. So I did. Okay. Um, and then I started writing and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I sat there for four hours and I wrote eight pages, legal size, eight pages legal. Okay. And by the time I was done, you know, when I realized I was done, all of a sudden what occurred to me was how sore my hand and my wrist and my <laughs> forearm were. But while I was writing, I didn't have that sensation. It just was like a brain dump. I mean, it's like you're in the flow, right? <laughs> and that's what writers call the writer's flow, right? And I want you all to be able to achieve that. So I'm going to show you how you can achieve that tonight. But in any case, when I finished, um, I started rereading it and I started crying. I'm like, holy smokes. And this is some big stuff. It wasn't like, you know, <laughs> no, no, no longer, you know, buy the big house and, and own a bunch of apartments. And I mean, all that stuff was done, believe me. Um, but what really came out was more about, um, you know, creating things that were bigger than me, right? So like this team, this team is bigger than me. I'm just one person. Left to my own, I can do some simple, several transactions in a year. But if I surround myself with really good, ambitious, smart people, okay, together we can accomplish a lot more. And we we have. So far, we've closed 835 transactions, right? That's a phenomenal feat considering the market we've been in, okay? So I had that vision years ago. Ten years before this team was even started, I had that vision. <clears throat> the Healing House Foundation, that started... That vision was back before even I did this, this first exercise. It was in my, I was probably 30, 33, maybe 33 years old when that, when the vision for the Healing House Foundation came out. But these were things that were way bigger than what my small mind 
could ever conceive, right? Way bigger. That's what I mean by big vision, okay? Um, you know, I had the vision of, of traveling all over the country and teaching, right? And this was this was 12 years before I started traveling the country teaching. I had the vision, okay? So this is why I want you guys to do this because you're capable, each one of you is capable of far more than you can ever possibly imagine on your own, right? And I say it so confidently because I've actually lived it. Is anybody here, is this starting to make sense, what I'm describing here? Any, any yeah. And don't be afraid to raise your hand or speak up, guys. Okay? Um, you know, there's lots of writing about this. There, it's even in scriptures, and, and I'm not, you know, telling you should read any particular uh, uh, religious dogma. I mean, I've read several of them. You know, but I think you've heard me say this before. I've studied the Christian Bible, the Torah, the Quran, the Gita, even some Buddhism. I didn't really understand Buddhism. It's hard to study because there's not one set of, of, of dogma. It's, 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 there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of scattered out there. But in any case, um, a lot of these same lessons are very similar and very common across all the major religions of the world, right? The one thing everybody has in common is one true God, right? So, you know, you might consider that the higher consciousness. You may consider it the universe. I'm okay. I, whatever works for you, okay? As long as you you sense it, you know it's there, and you feel that connection. I'm here to tell you you can tap into it, okay? And it's there for a reason. It's there on purpose, and it's it's intended for you to do this, okay? When you do that is when you're able to come out you know, with and, and, and document this big vision for yourself. Is it going to change? Absolutely, it's going to change. As your life progresses and your life circumstances change, your vision is going to change, okay? Um, typically, it gets bigger, okay? And what you'll notice is some of the smaller items start to kind of fade away. They start to fall off the vision, all right? Um, you know, for example, <laughs> you know, when I first started out, I thought, well, I'm going to have 10,000 rental units. You know, have you ever thought about what it would really be like to have 10,000 units? The level of work involved to manage that? I don't care if you're a man, if you're, yeah, you, you would have to have 10 managers manage that. And those 10 managers would each actually have to have 10 managers underneath them, right? It's a major monumental task because you're dealing with human relations, right? And that's a one on one management experience it, 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 it at a certain level it gets down to one-on-one -on -one. so that's a major undertaking what i realized is is you know i just wanted to learn how to do it and i did i had several hundred units but i really enjoyed teaching other people how to do it that was always part of the theme of, of my vision was teaching i didn't think i was any good at it in fact i probably wasn't in the beginning i never thought of myself as a teacher my small mind didn't my small mind was build an empire and make a lot of money and retire when I was 40 years old. I did all that. I, I, I retired when I was 40. Okay. But what I'm telling you is when you flip this, this whole thing called your paradigm where your focus is going outwards and you're focusing on others, right. And not yourself, your whole world is going to change. And that phenomenon will usually come out in a vision exercise. Okay. So let's take a quick pause here. So Dutch, does that help? Actually, Dutch just stepped away from his camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions or aha moments? Any clarifications? Yes, that okay. helps. That helps. Okay. Thanks, uh -huh. Dutch. I've, right. I've been through I've been through those um vision things before and you're absolutely right when it stops focusing on you. Mm -hmm. Although the vision comes back on how can you become a better leader to help more people? You have to change yep. to help those people. You have to change to help other people because it ends up not to benefit for you, but that it's the benefit for other people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, yep. I, I understand. I've got it. I, I, yep. I know it's not different from some of the other places. I'll probably be attending the Vision Conference for three days down in Morningstar 
this um, nice. at the end of the year, which I've gone to for the last seven or eight years. But we spend three days praise and worship and listening. But <clears throat> the best, like you said, the best time at the, at the pond, at the lake, the place where yep. you're alone with the Lord or alone with your <clears throat> meditation. So, yes, yep. very much. So, I went to get the making of a leader which is what I'm focusing on now by Frank Damasio, which I know I have several copies in my garage because I wanted to read it to prepare yep. for the vision. So I'm not gone. I'm, okay. I'm connected Bluetooth. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. But I'm um, thanks, Dutch. So, yes, sir. So, guys, what, what Dutch is talking about is there's different kind of leaders. And there's not, it's not like, you know, um, one leader, there they could be some bad leaders too, like dictators, right? <laughs> North Korea, that might not be a good example of a leader, who knows, but other people standards. But what we're talking about is um, there's leaders who are very strict and tough and use tough love to, to get their job done, and it works. I'm not knocking it. My dad's one of those, okay? And I'm grateful for it. I'm glad that my dad is the way he is, okay? Um, there's others who are considered servant leaders, all right? Now, typically, servant leaders are able to get more done with less force, okay? Because they simply serve others. And at the end of the day, if you think about the, the, the leaders that we remember the most in the history of the human race, would you say that they were strict disciplinarian type leaders or were they more classified as servant leaders? Which which would you guess? Servant. Servant. Servant leaders. All the way across the board. I mean, just look at recent history. Go back, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, Mahatma Gandhi. You know, look at Abraham Lincoln. Good Lord. What that what that man was able to accomplish, you know, that's just phenomenal. You know, look at our look at the nation's forefathers. You know, 57 signers of the Declaration of Independence, and all but a small handful were either murdered, persecuted had their land taken from them, lost everything, lost their families, lost their fortunes, so that you and I can sit here today, 250 years later, and be on a Zoom call together. <laughs> I just find that fascinating, you know, because all, all, all the way back, there's plenty, you know, Jesus was the one that's probably the most famous as far as building masterminds and things like that. He built the first mastermind, and, you know, but there's other great saints and spiritual leaders and, and all the religions, so they all are classified as servant leaders. I'm not saying you should be teaching and preaching and stuff like that. But when you're serving others, one of the ironies is, is every vocation could be a, summer, a form of ministry. I don't mean minister ministry like you're a minister. That's not what I'm saying. Ministry means serving others, right? In the case of real estate, it's perfect because you're helping people buy and sell houses. You're helping investors build family fortunes, right, and build their future, their financial futures in retirement. You're serving others. And what's really cool about this is, is it does come back to you, okay? It comes back to you many times over, right? You'll have opportunities come your way you've never imagined. I can promise you that. So, you know, what I want to do is go over how you actually prepare for this. So if I'm going to share my screen, okay? And if you guys have questions or comments, remember, please, uh, um, open up and share and ask. I'm certainly don't mind. And this is, uh, this class is, is your class. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm remember I'm the guide, you're the hero. So let's see, member login. That's a new looking view. I don't remember seeing that before. Um, let's see what that says. Grow your real estate team. Interesting. How about that? How's that for being prophetic? <laughs> I couldn't have, I couldn't have had that happen any better if I planned it. Um, okay, so if we go into GIA Fast Track, all right, and you got to click on again the 90 day fast start because it's a separate platform that it's on. That's why you have to do another click there. Excuse me. And you always start with the first 30 days. And if you come down here, you'll see here's the four exercises. Vision, goals, action, plan. So I'm going to pull up the vision exercise, okay? 
And I want you to, if y'all could each, if you could each go ahead and do this, if you want to do it now, feel free. Um, go ahead and start up another browser session, go in there and, and go ahead and open this up and download it, you know. And Andre, feel free to use this and share it. This is one of those things that that um, it's not something you charge for. It's like the seatbelt. Did you know? Do you guys know the guy who invented the seatbelt gave the patent? He, did you guys know that he chose to not to not make money on the seatbelt? He, uh, he, chose? The, he chose to give it to the common wow. good of the of the human race. Yep. Wow. So, yep. Pretty interesting. So this is one of those things. I I I can't take credit for this completely. I mean, I had the experience of, of trying it out, but I'm not the first person who's come up with a vision exercise by any stretch of the imagination. But this one, what's unique about it is um, how we prepare for it and the fact that we do it on an individual basis. So I've been in conferences where everybody sits in a big room and does this, and I never liked it because I'm you know, aware of everybody around me, right? Um, hang on one second there we go i'm aware of everyone around me and it's distracting so i wanted was i wanted to be isolated and i where i didn't have outside uh, influences you know sounds anything that wasn't natural i wanted to eliminate computers cars phones anything that was natural hey i'm i'm, I'm all for it man bringing in birds fish you name it so that's why i chose that environment so i recommend that you choose wisely the environment for you to do your vision exercise. It could be in your own home, as long as you can go to a room somewhere where, you're, where people know to not disturb you for a couple hours. And I suggest a beautiful view, right? Uh, look outdoors, or if you have a, fam now you a do, favorite. Pick. You do realize, Gary, this is the winter yeah. time right now for a lot of us, and it's cold yeah. outside. Yeah, that's why yeah. you go to Florida. Uh huh. Well, just, just say it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I do. I do believe. It. I just coming from Germany. They're they're on level with Nova Scotia. It's like already snowing up there. But yeah, definitely. If you have a, an inside place with a, a good, comfortable, sturdy chair, you don't want to be lounging in back. You want to be sitting up straight with your back straight. Um, we would be better maybe... off doing this in the summertime in anticipation of yeah. December. Yeah. Well, I, I still do it every year. I mean, yeah. I, mine, mine's always <laughs> always did it the week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, but I would really encourage you to find a place that's inspiring for you. It could be a piece of art. It could be a, a, a big window looking outdoors um, at the, the countryside. Whatever it is for you, choose that, okay? Um, and make sure you, you definitely do not bring in your laptop. This is something you want to write, and there's an actual scientific reason why you want to write this down. You do not want to type it. You want to write it. Uh, and definitely, definitely do not bring in your cell phone. Absolutely turn that thing off. Keep it outside the room. And, you know, now if you're in Florida, you can go out and sit outside. But like like Karen said, if you're up north, you need to be inside to do this. Um, and you can do this multiple times a year. In fact, if you have a, a major life event, um, a change or something really dramatic could could be positive could be negative you're going to want to do this again because it'll change your paradigm right so in any case back, back to this um definitely eliminate all external um distractions okay um you definitely want to block out in two to four hours some people do in two hours some people do in four hours you know i can always when i look at one it's pretty clear how much time somebody put into it, um, you know, and I, I don't judge everybody, you know, you, you know, you make your own decisions in life. All my, my job is to support you. Okay. But I, I can tell you, the more you put into it, the more you devote yourself to it, the better and bigger the results. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is physiologically, you want to lower your breathing, your breathing rate, you want to lower your heart rate too. Right. And that requires you to calm down and there, there's four basic states that, that that doctors and scientists medicine recognize alpha beta theta and beta okay or delta excuse me um delta is the one where you're pretty much asleep you're unconscious okay theta is your kind of in between either going into or out of sleep 
alpha and beta are more action oriented. Right now, we're 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 in, some of us are in alpha, some are in beta. So what I want you to do is to get to theta, which is where you're very calm. You're not going to sleep, but you're in the same kind of uh, physiological condition that you would be in in order to go to sleep. Okay, but you're not going to go to sleep. So you'll know you're there. When you you notice, you can focus on your breathing. Can you notice your breathing is is a lot uh, uh, stable, calmer, and um, you know slower, and not probably not as deep either. And your heart rate will lower down. All right. So you can use music to do this. I personally use prayer. I pray for you guys every single day, and family, and like I said, circumstances and guidance, and and uh, you know circumstances being globally and locally and everything it takes me about an hour to an hour and a half sometimes to do it but that gets me in that state okay um and when you're there another thing you'll notice is you're still aware of everything around you you can hear the bird chirp outside you can hear the, the dog bark down the street the difference is your mind doesn't go to the dog barking and imagining what the dog looks oh that's a smith's dog blah 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 blah, blah. no you just let it pass through Okay, you're aware of it, but it doesn't doesn't hijack your mind. Your your mind is still in that theta state, and that's the state you want to be in when you're either you know praying, meditating, or engaging in an activity that's creative, like writing. Okay, so having just come from Germany, as you might imagine, there's some some major composers from Germany, right? Bach, you know, Beethoven. Um, you know, several others, uh, Mendelssohn. So do you think those guys were distracted when they were writing, composing these, these great musical compositions, or were they more in a really highly focused, like in a zone? They were in a flow. They were in a flow. In fact, you'll hear writers sometimes say, it felt like the words were just coming through the pen, and they weren't really coming through me. You'll hear writers say those words. That's what you're going to feel like when you're writing. Maybe not in the first sentence or two, but once you get that flow going, guys, I promise you, you'll be in the, you'll you'll be in the flow. All right. Now, um, having said that, I I do know people personally who prefer to listen to like uh, recordings of sounds of nature. You know, the babbling brook, the crashing waves, the 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 soft rain coming down, things like that. Leaves ruffling in the wind. Whatever works for you, that that's that's what you want to do, okay? Um, to get in that calm state. Now, let me do a quick break here. Any any questions on this so far on the on the getting prepared for this, okay? All right. Well, what's interesting? Usually at this point, somebody will say, I you know they'll they'll send me a message saying, I just don't know if I have time to devote to this two hours. And my answer to that is, I promise you, this two hours will buy you hundreds of more hours down the road of, of really clear focus and you'll be able to accomplish your goals because you'll have such a clear vision. You know, you're 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 gonna you're it would be hard to distract you and derail you from achieving your vision. I, I can promise you that. So in any case, a couple quick tips here. Just in case you happen to start writing and answering the question, how do I want to view my life when I'm oh, sorry how do I want to view, uh, what do I want to see when I look back upon my life, okay? Um, now, other practitioners call this the rocking chair test um, or what's called future projection. You're projecting yourself forward to your, you know, 99 years old and you're you're on your last day and you're looking back and you're, you're seeing your life flash before your eyes, right? It's sort of like a movie script. You know, what do you want to see not what you think you're going to see. So if you write down what you think you're going to see, that's your small mind doing the talking. That's your that's your your conscious mind trying to take over and dictate what you're doing and how you're acting and reacting. Right? If you let your subconscious mind take over, that's your connection to the almighty or superconscious universe, whatever you want to call it. Okay, that's your connection is through your subconscious. When you're there, it, it'll almost be effortless. You, know, you just you'll start you start thinking of your your environments in your life, your family. If you want to write this down, guys, this is a kind of a big help here. All right, 
most people can identify nine environments in their life. One of those environments is your family. So you want to write that down. Your family is an environment. Your friends are an environment. Okay. Your home where you live could be an apartment, a house, town home, could be a boat, could live in a camper. It doesn't matter. Wherever you lay your head down at night, that's your that's an environment. The area you live in, your village, town, neighborhood, that's an environment. Your business is an environment. Your body is an environment. Your mind's an environment. And you, your spirit, is an environment. Okay. So there's, there's more than that. But uh, essentially, there's there's nine environments. So when you're answering that question, just play through those different environments. If you have a family, if you still have, if you're lucky enough to have your parents and you got brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and uncles and aunts and children and grandchildren even, first off, consider yourself really blessed. But but that's start there. Start with that environment. Okay, your family environment. You know, how do you want those people to remember you? What do you want them to say about you when they talk about you to others? Okay, that's a really biggie, right? That'll 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 give you a lot of your values, and that'll help you get a really clear vision of the kind of person you want to be now, the kind of life you want to lead and live now, right? To be able to be reflected this way and remembered this way. So, in any case, um, then maybe you can move into travel and and things like that. But don't make it all about business. You know, business is just one of your environments. Um, what's interesting about this is, as you write, you will naturally progress and evolve into other environments that you're writing about. For example, if you're writing about your business, as you make more money, would you agree you're going to be more able to travel more around the world, right? So your environments all impact each other. What you change in one environment has an impact on your other environments okay so <laughs> as you improve your physical health you're going to naturally improve your mental health as you improve your mental health you're probably going to improve your relationships because you're going to be a happy more stable grounded per you know person you know clear connected grounded um that kind of stuff it all you know, that's that's all health health related physical mental spiritual health so you know, when you start writing about all these environments and really expand on it, write a story, okay? Think of it as you're writing a movie script or a book. You're writing a book or a story, okay? Um, I have had some people tell me they felt like they were writing a letter, right, to their to themselves from the future, like writing themselves, future projection, to writing the letter then to the person they are now, right? Um, pretty impactful stuff. I know a few people that did that. And, um, you know, pretty, pretty major results too. So in any case, keep writing and keep writing and keep writing. As long as you have the flow going and, and, and these thoughts and ideas and reflections are coming to you, keep writing them. Don't, don't stop just because you hit your all night environments. If you're keep writing, you keep writing. Okay. Um, and, and keep writing till you'll know you're done when the, when the flow will just, it'll just stop and you'll, you'll get the sensation that you're done. Okay. Um, in any case, let me take another quick pause and just let you guys mull that over and come up with questions if you have any. Looks like something's typed in the chat box there. Uh, Gary, I'm able to view items under GIA Fast Track, but can view items under the other tabs. I tried both Chrome and Microsoft Edge. Um, hey, Melinda, tell you what, let's, um, has Ryan or Paul looked at this for you, Melinda? If you can let me know. All right. Um, let if you e email Beverly, Melinda, just email Beverly. Let her know that you're unable to view the items in the fast track. Um, that should be an easy fix because it's a separate platform. That tells me for some reason that switch wasn't turned on for you for that platform. So that's a, that should be an easy fix. Anything other than that, you just let me know, okay? Um, okay, let's see. KPEC, uh, I, I this just the free flow or incurring new environment flow. Um, I'm not sure I'll follow you, Kay. Hey, Kay, let me be sure, first off, I promote you because I don't know that I promoted you. Hang on one second. 
Okay, Peck, you are now promoted. And bless Jeanette and Susan. I think I attempted to promote you. You may have declined, I'm not sure. Um, but you're all should be able to speak if you want to speak and type stuff in the chat box. Um, okay. In any case, there is another question you can ask yourself. It's really tied to the first one. It's, you know, when I'm gone, what do I want my loved ones to say about me? Well, that that really ties directly into the first one. I just put that in there as, a, um, you know, another way to come up with the answers to to that to those questions, okay? Um, in any case, the rest of this was just describing what I just described to you, okay? A couple of tidbits. Um if you find your analytical mind starting to kick in and you'll know what it is because it's going to, you're going to, you're going to find yourself wanting to analyze what you're writing, critique what you're writing, judge what you're writing, prioritize what you're writing, or even plan what you're writing. Okay. Don't do any of that stuff. If you find your mind going there, just say to yourself, I know I need to do that, but that'll come. That time will come. I'm focusing on the vision right now. Just you tell yourself those words, okay? And you'll you allow your subconscious mind to keep keep going in the flow. Um, Gary, just, this, just, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This hey, is Kay. Kay. What I was trying to ask, is this just like one free-flowing writing? Or do yeah. you kind of think about one environment, right, and then feel finished, and then move to a next environment, right, and then move on? How, how does yeah. it go? It's really free-flow. What will happen is... Um, it's really interesting to see this. And just the cool thing is, guys, I can't wait to hear what you have to say once you do it, if you haven't done this before. But one environment generally will lead, will flow into the next environment. That That's that's what we've seen. You know, um, sometimes, yeah, you'll, you'll find yourself realizing you hadn't written about travel, like you'd like to travel. And so your vision would be, you know, I want to I want to travel the world. I want to see all seven continents, you know. Um and seven seas and all that. And that that's a great vision. You know, in fact, that's 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 part of my vision. Um now, just as a side note, little side note here. If you're if you find yourself thinking, well, is this a goal? Don't worry, just keep writing. I'll I'll give you an example of a goal. If the vision is to be a world traveler, that's the vision. A goal would be I want to go to northern Italy. August 2024 for two weeks. So that that would be a goal that's in alignment with the vision. D does that make sense, guys? So the vision is to be a world traveler, see the world. A, a goal would be aligned with the vision, and a goal would be wanting to see a particular country like France or sorry, so, uh, Northern Italy um, for two weeks in August. You know. So so okay. Back to your question. It really is a flow. I don't think you're going to struggle with this at all. I think honestly, if you if you get started and you got a quiet environment and the little the little pitter patter of footsteps and puppy paws can leave you alone for a couple hours, you'll be just fine. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's really important that you, you make sure if every everybody knows what you're doing, so they know to leave you alone. You know so that's why sometimes it's important to go somewhere else. Hey, Bless, did you have a question? You can you can unmute yourself if you do. I think I'm, am I unmuted? I just want to make that I have, um, if somebody wants some quiet time, I have a first two weeks in next year, I have a timeshare on the beach in Falmouth, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Wow. If anybody would uh, like to use it, they're welcome. That's pretty awesome. Or it's for heck, rent or whatever. Heck, I, I might even... If I get my What's sister that? to come down here and take my place for a couple weeks, I'll take you up on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's um yeah. it's up for rent. Where is nice. it? It's in uh Falmouth, Massachusetts, Cape Cod. Oh, uh, what when is that? Um it's a beachside village in Falmouth, Massachusetts. In Cape Cod. Yeah, no, yeah, Cape Cod's great. I like that area. Um what when when is that? First to uh, the 29th through the 12th. Oh, okay. Well, we All can right. break it up and share it. Give everybody three days to work. Yes. There you Just go. 
Okay. Thanks, Bless. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Karen, you said you do I want to hear something freaky? Yes. I actually okay. sent it to Melinda <laughs> by accident. Yeah. You know what? When you said that, once you said about like, you know, go and talk about it and I'll, I'll give you guys some time just be before you said, you know, I'll give you guys the time to think about that or whatever. I had the weirdest experience. I'm a little weird anyway, but anyway, here and there. So um, I actually went to myself on my deathbed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Yeah. It, uh, like it, no. it's kind of like going to your true self, right? Yeah, that's okay. what you're talking yep. about. Well, yeah. that's your future projection. Your future projection yeah. for that. Yeah. For gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's where I went. I went, I literally yep. went there. Yeah. So it was like, that was kind of weird. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, so I'm kind of weird anyway, but th so those weird things happen. But you're just talking yep. about getting in touch with your true self so that the things that you're capable of, you're bringing out. So if, yeah. if you haven't done those kinds of exercises before, then, oh, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll definitely help you grow as a person. And I've had a lot of people over the years say those exact words as I felt like I met myself for the first time, you know? Yeah, but that's what it is, getting in touch with your true self. Yep. And it's your, some people call it your higher self, your inner, inner self, self, your spiritual self. Yep. yep. And I'm telling you what I what I made the comment, you're far more capable of so much more than you could possibly imagine on your own. It is so true. It, and it's, you know, we're not the, you know, this is stuff that's been known for, for thousands of years. And when you tap into that, what happens is, you're actually dramatically raising the bar. So there's a famous um, author named Ogmandino. It has a famous quote. He says, I would rather shoot for the stars and hit the moon than shoot for the moon and hit a rock. You know? So when you write down things that you, you really deeply want, you know, for, for your family, for yourself, for your loved ones, you know, for the world, um, the act of writing them down makes them real. Okay. That's why you want to write this stuff in your own hand. There's something magical that happens between your mind, your hand, your eyes. You're watching yourself, right? You know, it's just, it has such an imprint on yourself. Um, and when you go through the rest of the exercises, the goals, the action, the plans, the way it works is the plans drive your actions through the accomplishment of your goals that are alignment with your vision. That's the, that's the path, okay? It all starts with the vision, right? Vision, goals, action, plans. The way you execute is following your plan that drives your actions through your goals. It's in alignment with your vision. So here's, an, here's a practical example of why this is so important. If you don't do stuff like this, okay? This or something like it, you're gonna go through life in reaction mode. And you may have, at the beginning of a day, a certain objective in mind you know i'm going to you know get my kids to school pick them up from school i'm going to get the tires changed i'm going to go to walmart and i'm going to spend two hours calling my sphere right and i'm going to make supper okay well your one of your kids gets sick you got to go pick them up from school you're late for the appointment with the mechanic and not only does he tell you you got to get new tires you need your brakes too right this is how life occurs Okay, now, at the end of a day like that, okay, what do most people do? They're like, boy, I made it. I'm going to go curl up in bed, turn on the TV, you know, grab a book, whatever, right? And you put everything else aside. Here's a famous quote. I'll get to it when. What's the answer? I'll get to it later. Later or tomorrow, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to bet you my next million dollars that if you do this exercise, you won't find yourself saying that. What you'll say is, you know, I need to get back, spend five more minutes on, on my, what I set out to accomplish today. And this is all subconscious. You're, it's not like you're going to have to make a conscious effort because your vision is so powerful, right? Your vision is so clear in your mind and it's so, it's so important and so powerful that if you don't take one action a day 
because of that alignment effect, it's like telling your subconscious that your vision is just not worth it. And your subconscious is not going to allow that to happen. Okay. This, that's a real practical example of why you want to do this stuff. I'm not saying work your life away. That's not what this is about. This is about making the most of every moment and making sure that every moment has meaning and has purpose. Okay. Um, it's in alignment with your, with your achieving goals or alignment with your vision. And remember, they're going to impact your family life and your children, right? And your spouses and your parents and your friends and your neighbors and everybody, you know, just like anything else you do in your life. But now you'll have this connection. You'll have this alignment thing going on. It's going to keep you, you know, laser beam focused and, and, and much, much less likely to be distracted, easily distracted. You know, in real estate, we're all entrepreneurs. We are famous for being easily distracted. You know, the next shiny thing that comes up, that's the thing I'm going to do. That, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a million bucks doing that, right? And that happens 25 times in our lives. But when you have that vision that's so clear and it's so much bigger than you, your vision is always going to be bigger than you, right? Your big vision is going to be way bigger than you, okay? So your big vision needs your undivided attention. It needs you to be focused. It needs you to be following your plan, okay? And taking your the actions you need to take that day to achieve your goals that are alignment with your vision, all right? Now, I'm, I'm bringing science and logic and rationale to this. The reality is, is it's all very natural. When you go through the process of following this, and the more you do it, the better you get at it. And the more times you practice it, the better you get at it, the easier it becomes. It becomes, becomes more natural. That's really how we're wired, you know. In fact, if you, if you know, whether you believe in God or not, even if you look, just to say there is a God, you think God wants you to live life of mediocrity, you know, constantly in reaction mode, worried and stressed. What should I be doing now? Guessing, wasting time, or is He want you really focused on what what's most important, which which is you living your life's vision? Which way do you think it is? For, for ladder yeah you know so so give yourself permission to tap into that and take advantage of it you know it's not anything we're taught in school you know you you, you know you either gotta have the idea yourself and, and realize there's something more to this or get lucky enough like i was and, and have both that and have a guy named stephen covey show up at your at your office one day only to find out decades later the guy's you know one of the, the biggest thought leaders in the history of the human race. Um, so yes, I had some lucky moments in my life. I've also had some really unlucky moments in my life, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it's all part of the journey. You know, you don't, you don't, uh, you know, you're going to have mishaps. You're going to make mistakes. You know, sometimes you're going to guess wrong. Sometimes somebody else's vision is going to be bigger than your vision, you know, but as long as you have a vision, you'll always be able to get back to it and it's going to have its place and you're going to have your place. So in any case, um, I just want to give you that little little bit of an explanation there at the end. Uh, we are at exactly eight o'clock, which is a miracle. Somehow or another, we, that worked out perfectly. But I don't have to go right now, guys. I can stay on, you know, longer if you guys want. I do this every time and I certainly do it mine. So why don't we go ahead and open it up to some some candid questions and uh, even thoughts and suggestions if you want. Even if it's something transaction related or client related, it doesn't have to be related to the vision exercise. I, I think you got enough now. If you download this tonight and read through it and make your plan. So I'm going to challenge you. It's now Monday. I'm going to challenge you that you'll make a plan to do this exercise between now and next Sunday. Just take the two hours and do it. Okay. Is that who here feels like that's, that's doable. Just re do a hand raise. Hand raise or uh, let me uh, stop the share here so I can see your hands raising. Or type uh, in the chat box to say uh, doable. Yeah. Okay. So far, we're about halfway there. What's amazing when you guys do that, when you raise your hands and type in something, you surface to the top of my my uh, uh, view. Like it's called a, I forget the view, but um the grid view. So if you're if you're not participating like you're in the bathroom, you'll drop to the bottom. It's weird how that happens, you know. So in any case, uh well, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. 
to do this. Um, I really hope you you take it to heart, give it your best effort, you know, treat it like it's the most important thing because in that moment in those two hours, it probably is the most important thing, you know? So, uh, but does anybody have any, need any help on a transaction or a client or a goal? How about a marketing campaign? Anybody want something to do to drum up some business right now? Or we got plenty of business? <laughs> I'm always interested in that, Gary. <laughs> well, I got one for you. Guess okay, what well, happened today on the com commercial mastermind show? And I've thought about this before, but um, Eric mentioned that he happened to call one of the podcasters. You know how we do podcasts every week? So over the last three or four years, I've interviewed, I don't know how many hundreds of uh, podcasters. Almost all of them are related to real estate in some way, shape or form, real estate investing or real estate brokerage. So Eric had the idea of calling this one podcaster, all right, and to work with them. And I'm going to suggest you guys do the same thing. So just go through the podcast, right, the, the list of podcasts. Let me go um, through my share screen again, and I'll show you where you can find this. Um, okay, if you go back to the real estate <laughs> – excuse me, real estate with Gary Wilson.com website. So you click on resources and there's podcast right there, followed by blog, click on the podcast. Okay. And you can go through these in reverse order. Look for subjects like um, commercial financing for unbankable real estate deals of Malcolm Turner. So that's definitely somebody you might want to call. Short-term housing, a recent shift to real estate investing with Alex Jarbo. Okay. You think this guy is interested in finding good deals around the country? Alex Jarbo? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? There's, there's very few of you that are in the same market as someone else on the team. So if every one of you called Alex Jarbo, Chances are he'd be happy to hear from each of you because you're all in different areas of the country, right? So one of the one of the reasons for doing these podcasts is to drum up business for everybody on the team on a, glo a on a global basis. That was that was part of the overall uh, vision for this team. Um, and so I suggest call these people. There's there's hundreds of them, page after page after page. Um, if you click on view all podcasts. I forget, it's so many per page. There you go. There's the podcast archive. Going back, there's 240. That's a lot of podcasts. And you can go all the way back to the very beginning. And that's probably me. Yep, that's me speaking. Um, and then eventually we get to... Uh, here, talking with Dennis, a real estate investor, was Stephen Hatcher. Tell you what, Stephen Hatcher was in my mastermind group. He is a dentist, and he's a big investor. I think he had as many units as I did. Tom Schaff was one of Tony Robbins' right-hand men, and he was in a mastermind group I was in. And he's he's real big on fundraising for big projects around the country. That would be somebody good to call. Okay? Um Steve Weiss. Well, use a boy, that is a look up Steve Hurricane Weiss. Okay. Um, and see what he's all about. He's a pretty neat guy. At least some of these I haven't seen for a while. Um, but in any case, you can you can call these folks, right? And ask them, tell them you're on, on the team and ask them how can you help them? Are they looking for any investments right now? Tell them where you tell them where you work. Okay, so so I want to thank Eric for that, for bringing that to my attention, because I hadn't thought about that for a long, long time. So thanks, Eric, for mentioning that today. Yep. So, okay, guys. Well, if you've had enough, we can go ahead and sign off. If you do have questions, um, I need my listings to sell. <laughs> That's right. Um, you know what, guys, the market, I'm sure you notice is shifting. The average home price has dropped a little bit in the last quarter. 
Um, days on market has increased. But here's some really good news. Statistically, did you guys know that if interest rates come down a full percentage point, that approximately 8 million more people will enter the real estate marketplace? Do you guys know that? Nope. 8 million people. That's a lot of people. That's that's more than four clients. That's about four clients per agent yeah. across the country. That's four deals. Just just for that, just that one little thing right there. Um, so in any case, the Fed did so say they're the going to gonna do. They said they're gonna lower rates in 2024. Now, part of that could be because it's political. They the party that's in control now wants to stay in control. So they want to promise people they're gonna lower interest rates, but I, I'm I'm just speaking to you as, from a as an, a from an economic standpoint, um, not a political statement, but I think I think the Fed, in hindsight, has actually done a fair job of managing interest rates over the last year and a half. You know things were, were really hot, you know, and it's painful to cool things off, but if you don't do it, the 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 alternative result could be far more catastrophic. So. I think they probably waited a little bit too long to start. And I think the government printed too much money, but you know that's in the past. Where we're at are now is they realize things are starting to cool off and they're not waiting to be in reaction mode. They're starting to think proactively. And that's what I like to see, okay? So in any case, um, uh, of course, I'm the eternal optimist too, but I think next year we'll see some price, some rate drops. And I think you'll see more people entering back into the marketplace. I also think you're going to see a lot of commercial properties come on the market in the next two years. That's what I think. 20, 2024 and 2025, um, you know, it's, it's it's inevitable. The writing's on the wall. Not a darn thing anybody can do about it. So you might as well take advantage of it and be part of that transaction and help those people, you know? So, okay. Um, you're welcome, Jackie. Thank you. Hey, uh, Juan, also on your listings, Juan, if any of them you think could be interesting to investors, just put them on the workplace page, okay, and also post them on Facebook. So I think you guys have the ability to post a message on the team of realestatewithgarywilson.com, sorry, Real Estate with Gary Wilson Facebook page. I think, I could be wrong there, but try it out and see. But if you just post it on your page and share it, okay, share it with at least me, everybody on the team, we can get that shared across the whole universe of, real, of global investor agents. But the key with your listings is if you think they have appeal to anybody, is get them out there. Don't just put them on the MLS. Um, post them and share them, right? And definitely put them on Workplace, the GIE Workplace page. So a couple of those came up today in the commercial mastermind. But do, do that, Juan. You know, Wait, what did you say? Put what on the workplace? On the, if, if you have properties to sell, put them on the GIA oh, okay. workplace page. Yep. Yep. Um, let's see. Someone else types in the Jeanette. Uh, what should we say to those people you did a podcast with? So, Jeanette, what I would do is call them, call them up, email them, just say, hey, I'm, I'm Jeanette Foley. I'm on Gary Wilson's Global Investor Agent Team. Um, I listened to your podcast. I'm just curious, how can I help you? What what kind of properties are you looking for right now? I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. Let them know, let them know you're in the greater Phoenix area. You know, just say you're, you're just say you're in Arizona, just give them the state. Okay. Um, but that's what I would do, you know. Offer to help, you know, offer to help. Always the best approach. Good question, too. Thank, thank thanks you. For that. You're so welcome. Sometimes I've I've uh, I've taken that advice before in other forums, Gary, where there's been like a podcast type of a thing or a guest, yep. and you know maybe you can't find the 45 minutes or an hour to what sit down and listen to that a whole podcast, but zoom to the middle of it somewhere and listen to five ten minutes and find something within it that you liked, something that spoke to you or something that resonates with you. When you contact yep. the person, you reach out to them, use that thing and say, "Hey, I really like what you had to say about this," and then you know kind of mirror it or say say something anecdotal about what they said and, you know, you get a little commonality, common ground, compliment them and, Hey, this meant something to me. Thanks for, thanks for bringing it up and taking the time to do that. Um, and then, yep. you know, we would already, we would already share you in common as well as a, as a basis of talking point, but 
you know i yeah. i found that com coming from that from that point people typically respond really well in kind because you're paying them the compliment you know yeah well i'll give you another big hint about podcasters what's one thing podcasters all want and need what do they need us to do the listeners when we listen to the podcast what do they need us to do Yeah. Like, contribute like share leave, and leave a oh leave a comment yeah <laughs> review leave, leave a review yeah go to go to apple take leave action. a review podcasters will reward you for that i promise Promote you leave them. a review and then you reach out to them it'll say hey i just want to tell you i was so impressed with your podcast i just left a review i never leave reviews but I felt compelled to leave you a review. You know, you know, I'm a I'm an investor agent. How can I help you? What are you looking for? You know, that will go a long ways. So remember, a lot of these podcasters, guys, they're syndicating a lot of deals. They're bringing together investors to contribute money to buy properties. They're they're hungry for deals right now. You know, so. Yeah. So Gary, quick question. Yeah. Um, I guess for these investors or investors like them, are they usually um are these the ones that are usually not loyal per se to agents or are they? And then if not, how can we make them loyal to us? Yeah. The best way to make the best way to create loyalty is to just do a good job, to really learn the subject matter, learn the methodology and the terminology of investing because Remember, there's a total of 3 million agents out there. 1.8 million are on NAR. And statistically, this is this is everybody's best guess. At a maximum, only 5% actually understand investing. Only 5% of agents have a thorough understanding of the terminology and the methodology of investing. So I would definitely study and learn that the terminology and the methodology. And then when you speak with them, they're going to pick up on that. They're going to they're going to know you know what you're talking about. It doesn't matter if you never invested before. Do you guys know the vast majority of commercial agents never invest in a piece of property in their entire life? But they master the terminology and the, and the methodology. You know? So um, so that's the best thing you can do. I, I've in my business, personal business, after about a year or two, I no longer had to get the buyer's agency agreements. I just wasn't, I didn't even take the time to do it because I had so much repeat business. You know, the same people will come back and they'll tell me, they'll say, you know what? Other agents, they see what I'm doing and try to get my business. And, and they'll say, I just have no reason to go anywhere else because I know that with you, I'm I'm going to get, you're going to help me get good deals and help me negotiate them and, and, you know, make sure I make money in this business. So why would they change? You know, if they're making money and you're helping them, they are not going to change. It's just like anybody investing in the stock market through mutual funds. If their mutual funds are doing great, they're not going to change, you know? So you're going to stay with a proven winner. That's how you create loyalty. I'm not saying don't do the buyer's agency agreement. I think you should in the beginning, but when you're up and running, okay, and you start getting repeat business and referrals, I, I hate to say it because I know the brokers would, 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 would spank me for this, but I don't think you're going to need buyer's agency agreements with your clients. Once you show them, you know what you're doing, you know, that's, has anybody else experienced that? Yeah. I, um, yeah. I never actually got buyer's direct agreements, but I think Gary, the landscape is changing with this whole commission lawsuit. So I think it might be a little dangerous not to do it from going forward. <laughs> what is your take on it? That's a good point. If you have um, now if you have, if you already have existing clients, um, and you're using you regularly, I would like to think you wouldn't need that anymore, regardless of the the, the current climate. But with the what the lawsuits, what Anna's talking about is um, you'll have people trying to take advantage of that and and try to cut your commission down or cut you out. You know, it hasn't happened a lot so far. Thank goodness. I've heard of like like one instance in the last two months, um, probably because it just, the news keeps moving along. Now, what was it in news two months ago? People have already forgotten about, you know, but you'll have the occasional client that's going to try your patience, 
So I would say, you know, to be smart, get those agreements, especially early on, you know, in your relationships. Later on, you can determine if you if you still need them or not, you know. But to be safe, have them. If you have them, it's much safer to have them than not have them. That's for sure, you know. So, th thanks, Anna. So my understanding was that they te they usually don't sign those agreements, or maybe that's just something I heard on the internet. Do you have any opinion on that? I find Jeanette is um the ones that are typically like they're professionals, they're business owners. Um, they're they want to work with other professionals. When they sense that you know what you're doing, they won't have a problem signing those agreements. And they're typically going to be like your dentist, your engineers, your teachers, your military, um, airline pilots, those those groups. But the ones you get from the investor clubs, they're the ones generally not likely to sign something, at least early on. They're gonna they're they might later on, after you do two or three deals with them, yeah, they, they'll probably sign one with you, but not in the beginning. Um, the problem is, and I love those investor groups, guys, and you should all belong to them. If you don't belong to an investor group right now, RIA or Acre, for example, you're really missing a boat. You're missing a boat on a lot of potential deals. Um, the challenge is, is going back a generation or two, they've all been taught that there's millions of agents that will do whatever they want. And they have to teach us and train us on what to do. They're not used to investor agents. They're not used to you being trained and, and knowing the terminology and the methodology. When you approach them with the right type of, like the booklet, for example, like you should always have a handful of booklets available when you go to investor meetings, right? Because other agents are handing out business cards, little teeny business cards. You're handing out freaking booklet you know, with examples of the last three flips in the area. Who do you think those investors are going to call the next day? The other five agents that gave them a business card? Please, please, I love referrals. Please send your referrals to me on their business card. Or the agent hands them a booklet that has a calculator in there, like a spreadsheet, right? Something relevant in the news about real estate and three examples of three recently sold investment properties. Which agent do you think is going to get the calls the next day? Just just raise your one finger if you think it's the first agent with the business card, or two fingers if it's the second agent with the booklet. Second oh, agent. Not even close. Yeah. So, um, in any case, uh, yeah, there's, uh, believe me, I've had a lot of experiences with investor clubs. I mean, in the early days, you know, I, I what I did is I would uh, circle with my booklet because I realized everybody else had a card and I wanted to stand out. Um, and instead of getting up front and parading my properties, which was what most agents want to do, I got these properties for sale. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. What I would do is I would work the back of the room. I would walk around and introduce myself and meet people. That's what I did. Okay. So, and I showed them my booklet. That's how I built the relationships. It wasn't until later where they started inviting me to be go up front and stand up, sit on a panel and talk about rentals and flipping and so forth. That didn't come till later. In fact, what happened is the president of that one RIA group was he was an attorney. He asked me to write an article. In yeah. hindsight, he was testing me. He was testing to see if I was legitimate or not. I wrote an article that all of you have, by the way, in your material. And the title is, I'm tired of the stock market. Should I buy a duplex instead? That was the article I wrote. And I walked through the process of buying a duplex and going through the numbers and everything. And at the end, I finished with the question, you know, so what do you think I should do? Stick with the stock market or go out and buy a duplex with a question mark? And they still publish that article today, by the way. <laughs> you know, so they were testing me was what they were doing. And then he started inviting me to be on the panels. And then it got really easy. I had no problem getting business then, you know, but it all started because instead of me sitting up there and saying, I got this really good deal. You, has anybody been in those meetings? I got this really good deal. Does anybody ever actually buy those deals? No, no, no never. But yeah. so if you just let those guys do that and then you work the back room, the back of the room, right? Work the back of the room. And at the break, always go to the vendor desk and meet the vendors 
meet the attorneys, the lenders, the contractors, the flooring people, the cabinetry people, the insurance people, make friends with them, particularly the lenders and the attorneys, okay? And the appraisers, by the way, too. Um, but definitely the lenders and the attorneys, because if you throw deals to them for loans and for closings, they're going to throw deals to you, right? And not only that, they're the two most well-respected and demanded people, in-demand people in that whole group. And if they like you, they'll help you move ahead. So, so make sure you study your material. Make sure you understand how to calculate that operating income and and cash on cash return and just simple basic stuff like that. Um, you know, get learn it and get used to it because they'll recognize it. They they'll they're not dumb. They're they're smart people. That's why they have money. You know, so but that's really how you do that. That's one of the most important things you can do is belong to those groups and also. The next thing you can do, the most important thing, is to call them. You got to call them every now and then, every month, every two months, every quarter, whatever it is you can do. You want to reach out to them. Send them stuff via email, right? When something just closed, it looks like a really good deal. Say, did you see this? Did you see this? It just closed last week. This 10-unit building just closed right down the street from your office. Stuff like that. I mean, it makes a huge difference. You, know? you, you have to maintain contact with them. That came up today in a commercial mastermind, by the way, thanks to Karen. Thank you, Karen, for, for letting me call on you. And you brought that up. Those are the two of the things you mentioned that have led to your recent deals, you know? Yep. So um, the way the market's been, guys, man, you have got to pick up the phone. It's just, you're, I, I can promise you, your best shot at getting a deal is to pick up the phone and call people, <laughs> especially the way the market is now. Next year, things will start to go back in equilibrium. But for right now, you you gotta you gotta dial for dollars, right? Just 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 call. And don't worry about what to say. It'll happen naturally, you know. So, okay, good questions, guys. Anything I think else? there's I think there's a lot to be said for the way that you would like present the that document as well if you're presenting it with with confidence and like it's just something that is not that not that you're expecting it but you know it happens all the time and so often but if you, if you stumble and stutter on it and act like there's a reason like you're up to something and trying to get them to sign it trying to explain it away and whatever i people can i feel like people can see that you know um but yeah. the, the the biggest thing too is edifying yourself and in any kind of arrangement if i if i want to hire you as my attorney or if i want to whatever i want if i want you to babysit my kids i mean anything at all it's you the person needs to be the best person for the job everybody in the room is licensed anybody can work with them why would they work with you so ed edifying yeah. yourself and from that position of you know in, informing that person why you're the person in the room that matters and why, why they would go with you and, and, you know, having them understand that because they don't know who you are. They don't, they don't really almost, I would say they really don't even care kind of what you've done or who you are, or how good, good you can talk or all of that. It's sort of at what good a job can you do? And they, they haven't worked with you. They, you yeah. know, they don't have reason to love you, like you trust you sign anything with you. No, thanks. I'm not signing that. I wouldn't expect them to sign with me. They don't know me. Yep. You know, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy that car because you've sold 20 cars this year. I haven't test driven it. I don't know you. I don't know the price. I don't know anything about the deal. I'll keep looking. Thanks. I'll come get you when I need you. Kind of yep. thing. But yeah, edifying yourself to them and and proving kind of that you're worth your your salt sort of in the business. I would think would go a really a really long way yep. for them you know, feeling at ease. Yeah, I Thanks, agree Rob. with Rob. If I can add something too to what he just said. Um, in, in residential real estate years ago, um, I had absolutely no trouble getting people to sign the buyer agency agreement. I mean, I, every single person pretty much signed it, um, with investors, the newer investors would sign. Um, but the, 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 the investors that did it for a living, they're the ones that were a little bit more difficult, but you could still get them to sign for the day. Yep. So if you're concerned about your commission, they can still do it 
for the day or for those particular homes. They will do it. Right for that right. purpose. So if you want to protect your commission and that's what you're concerned about, then they will do that for you. You know, so I just bring that up. And then if you do a good job for them and they know that you know what you're talking about, then um, I agree with Gary earlier when, you know, you said, Gary, that, you know, they'll sign with you or they'll just keep coming back to you because that's, that's kind of how they operate. So anyway, yep. just thought I'd bring that up. Thanks, Karen. But I think it is oh. easier in, in, you know, in residential. Commercial is a little different beast. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, working with buyers and stuff. So it's a different, yeah, yeah. yeah. ball of wax. Hey, guys, something that was interesting is Jeanette found the article I was referencing on the Dental Town podcast page. I interviewed those guys on our podcast, and they interviewed me on their podcast, and they asked me to, to give them an article that's been previously published. And they would they would send out and they did and it's still there. <laughs> so the dentists are great. They're some of the best people I've ever worked with, you know. It's very good business people. Um okay, good stuff, guys. So so what I want to do with I want to wrap this up with um um the final assignment for tonight, which is heading into the new year, you know, I do believe um there could definitely be some challenges, but also believe there could be a lot of opportunities. And just looking at the numbers like I do, you know, I think we could surprise ourselves economically. You know, if the Fed really does lower rates, um, granted, it's going to drive up prices a little bit more on housing because more people will jump in the market, but it'll it'll get things moving again. Um, but in any case, um, what I would do is uh, go ahead and download the vision exercise if you haven't. Um, even if you've done it every year, like I do, I still do it every single year. It still changes every year. Um, I'm going to give you a real quick example here. Years ago, I'd written down 12 languages I was going to learn. And for years, I didn't practice, didn't learn, didn't do anything. I mean, I traveled. But all of a sudden this year, it, it came up in last year's vision exercise is I narrowed it down to four languages, Italian, Spanish, German, and French. I've already learned german and and spanish and, and french but i've also forgotten them and um so i relearned all of those you know in this past year i didn't get to italian yet but there's still two weeks left in the year two, two to three weeks left who knows maybe i'll learn italian in three weeks but that's the kind of stuff that happens almost again subconsciously i wasn't really thinking of it aware of it it just it just it's just the way the universe works you know you put your vision out there the universe is going to come to your, your aid and put things together for you right in front of your eyes. So download the vision exercise, do it this week. Um, send it to me. If there's stuff in there that you, for you is too personal to share, just redact it. You know, you can, you can make a copy, leave out certain sections, pages, you know, blank or whatever you want to do. Um, you know, it helps me connect with you when I see your vision and then you get to the goals and you get to your plans and I'm going to help you with, with all that too. Um, it actually connects me with your vision and your goals. It's hard to explain how that works, but it's like your goals become my goals. And the best way for me to get tied into that is for me to, to see what your, your vision is um, at least enough to be able to get that connection. So some of you have already experienced that and you can, you can attest to that um, and it really works. And I hope that you'll do that for someone else someday. You'll be in a position, you'll you'll have your own team and be doing the same thing. But can you guys do that? Is that a fair fair request for the next week? Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. And then check out your next your next investor group meeting and uh pick up your phone and and dial for dollars. Just call two people a day, something really easy. You know, Rob and I are gonna get into the, the goal setting and the planning with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So we're I'm going to give you a, a, a fair heads up here. Um, starting pretty soon, we're going to be working with you a lot more closely um, at the accountability level when it comes to goals and actions and plans. So we got we got big good. big visions for you. Okay. Sound yeah, I good? just want to say, I just want to personally say you know thank you Gary for taking the the having the insight of experience or whatever you want to call that to actually focus on a subject like this because 
I, for me, I, I feel like I can, I can honestly for years forever uh, have been able to say that I think myself included people that I've worked for people that I've worked with people under me, people that I've hired, whatever. I don't think any of us really take enough time and do enough personal work, enough personal inventory really to reflect and and map out our little gps of what we're doing where we're going how we're getting there and all of that and i can i can say personally in my own life that i have absolutely without a doubt been the most productive person when i have done that um and and i mean when i when i've done it with every measure like when I decided to, you know, be entrepreneurial and thought I was going to make millions of bucks and be my own boss and work, not work for the man and all that, you know, then you make no money and you have no, you have no direction. You have no, whatever, just simplest things like getting out of bed in the morning, taking a shower and actually getting dressed for the day, having nowhere to go, but actually, you know, brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, putting real shoes on, not sitting there in your pajamas, that kind of stuff is just mindset, you know? But if you go all the way down and you, even if you're making your own self your best accountability partner, there's a lot to be said for having the plan instead of, you know, you're sitting there watching Netflix or whatever you're doing during your day and you feel like oh, there's something better you could be doing with your time. There's there's two hours that you could really get back that you could really be given this attention or that attention. But if you've actually written it down and you've got something tangible that you can turn to look to and and you know that that's a higher, better use of your time than what you're actually doing now. And then you have the personal motivation to get up and go do the damn thing. That that to me, it's it's been the most viable thing. For me. Yeah, I agree. What was that? Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Well, that was some, I mean, yeah, someone else. So, yeah. So yeah, personally, man, thank you for for bringing that to all of our attention. Thank you for doing it yearly. I've I've been around when you. I think you've done it two other years and. It absolutely is 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 something that we all should do, and you know nobody really takes it to heart as as much as I think they should, and and I, you know for for what it's worth, it's it's been it's made a huge difference in my personal professional life a couple of times. So, hey, thanks, Rob. I appreciate that, man. Uh, um, well, guys, also make sure you're tuned in Wednesday night for the monthly team call. It's the last one of the year, and. We got some big stuff to go over with you. We have an event coming up in January. Some of you have already seen the marketing material because you're receiving it um, via email. We're posting it on online too. It's pre-marketing. It's education-based. It's stuff you can share. Remember, just when you get see something posted on Real Estate with Gary Wilson Facebook page, the educational stuff, that's what you want to like and share, okay, with your with your your um, your face on your Facebook pages. So, Starting right after the holidays, Beverly's going to start the marketing of the event itself. It's going to have more impact because we've already been educating people. And that's going to be on email and social media. So you can just share it with people. And the in intent of the entire event is number one, to develop some of our own team members, Shastine, John Giggy, and Gina. Okay. And each year we'll have three more people do it. Um You'll have people like Rob Lane stepping up to the plate, taking leadership roles. Everybody here is a candidate for that. That's part of it. The other part of it is the folks that are on the webinar listening to John and, and me and Shashin and Gina are going to get some, some very good uh, focused education on what to do in 2024. Okay. Some of those participants may want to join up. And if you invite them, they're going to join underneath you. And you don't have to do a thing. We do the heavy lifting. Okay. So that's a, an extra side benefit. But we want you to participate, support the effort, and show John and Shastine and Gina, you know, how you know how much you appreciate them and give them some love and support and help them help bring people to the event. Uh, you know, the more people that participate, the easier it is to to deliver a good content, right? So it really helps when you guys show up and bring your friends and relatives too. Sound good? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, we'll go over more of that on Wednesday. All right, you guys have a good night. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday night. If you need anything in the meantime, just let me know. Set up your calls for next week. Um, the week of Christmas, I'll be wor working. I'm not going to have any scheduled calls, um, but I'm going to be able to take calls and emails and help you out any way you need. But they're also sorry. I have Monday night meetings. I have Monday night okay. meetings, and so my meeting is just finished. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. Uh, next Monday will be the last one for the year, the 18th. So there won't be one on the 25th. 
In fact, there won't be one on the next Monday because that's actually January 1st. So you get two weeks off, guys. <laughs> um, but remember, you can always invite people to Monday Night Live. The, 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 the second Wednesday of the month, there's our monthly team call. That's internal. That's just us. But every Monday night, the Monday Night Live, that's open. You can invite any, anybody you want, anytime you want. And you should do that, you know? Okay? Okay, guys, I'm going to go find something sweet to eat. I'll, no. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, God, Thanks, God bless Gary. you. You're welcome, guys. God bless you and your families. And happy Hanukkah if you celebrate Hanukkah. And Merry Christmas coming up, right? Happy Kwanzaa if you celebrate Kwanzaa. Uh, whatever you celebrate, do it, do it with gusto and zeal and, and, and celebrate it and demonstrate it. Show people what you celebrate. Sound good? Yeah. Be blessed. Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Monday Night Live. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and go to realestatewithgarywilson.com to join our community and start building wealth today.